we would like to hear more about God and His works. Please subscribe to this channel for weekly content. We know Jesus was crucified on the cross, but do we understand why? When he was trial before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, he was accused of being the Messiah. Pilate asks Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? To which Jesus replies, You have said so. It was the governor's custom during the Passover to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. The chief priests and the elders thought they had succeeded in putting Jesus to death. The devil thought he had won the spiritual battle with the Son of God. The crowd shouted to release Barabbas instead of Jesus. Barabbas was a criminal. The name Barabbas means son of the Father. Jesus was the Son of God. Is this a coincidence? There is a deeper meaning to this supernaturally. Barabbas represents mankind who was set free for their sins committed. Barabbas deserved death, which was the rightful punishment for a criminal. Did God love the world? Yes, more than we can imagine. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is powerful. What is love? It is an intense feeling of deep affection. People tend to love conditionally, that is, they expect it back in return. But God's divine love is unconditional. It is not based on our doing or how we carry ourselves. God loves you irrespective of who you are or where you are. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. It was God's love for us that redeemed us when we were destined for eternal death. We think that we find God in our lives, but He finds us first. Luke 19 verse 10 For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Romans 5 verse 12 Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned, we were born into sin when Adam sinned. We did not sin to become a sinner. Spiritual death came as a result of our sinful nature. We couldn't be redeemed from the power of sin by any other human being. Only Jesus Christ could beat the power of sin. Why? Because he was the only one who could keep the law given and die without sin on the cross. 1 Peter 2.22 He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Jesus didn't take up the cross because he was sinful or deserved death. He took it up for us willfully as an eternal sacrifice for our sins presented to God the Father. Romans 8 verse 3 and 4 The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent His only Son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving His Son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who would no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law which man could not keep. He condemned sin in the flesh, as sin has no power over the Son of God. There is an end 
to sin's power in our lives. We are no longer enslaved by it. It means we do not willfully sin and we can control our actions. Jesus overcame spiritual death for us by resurrecting after dying on the cross. Romans 6 verse 9 Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again, death no longer is master over him. We will all die one day in this earthly life. Yet God saved us from eternal death after our physical death on earth. There is no repayment that we can give God for this. All we can give Him is our faith and trust in this completed work on the cross. It is the act of believing, accepting the sacrifice on the cross as an exchange for our sins which sets us free from the eternal punishment of sin. John 8.36 For if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We are individually responsible for our destiny with God. God gives us a choice in this matter. No one can influence it for us. Giving the Lordship of your life to God only makes it worthwhile. Ephesians 3 verse 17 So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and you being rooted and grounded in love. We are putting our faith in the everlasting God. There is a God who is the creator of the universe who says he loves us. Don't let any other person on earth tell you otherwise. Psalms 36 verse 5 and 6 Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains. Your justice like the great deep. Most of the universe is unexplainable and the depths of the ocean are unexplored. This is the majesty of the creation of God. This is the God that loves us and created us with his breath of life. God knows our heart, our thoughts and our actions, yet he gives us a choice on whether to accept him or not, because he is a righteous and a just God. Romans 8 verse 39 No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. We do not need to be afraid of God. He is always there for us. He is more real than life itself.